Welcome back to Battalion Marching Orders. I'm Greg Bowman. Joining me this week is the head coach of the North Bay Battalion, Ryan Olihan, who just took over midway through last season and will pretty much be starting his second year or first full year as head coach about the time where he took over last year because uh, the OHL is uh, slated to start on December 1st. First and foremost, Ryan, I mean, how good does it feel to finally have that at least start date in mind? Yeah, I, I think it's uh, it's refreshing for us. Um, you know, I think a lot of people were, were wondering when the news is going to come and, you know, what the date, is it sooner than people think? Is it later than people think? The fact of the matter is we do have something to shoot for. And like a big part of our business is, is planning, really. And um, now being able to have a plan, uh, being able to execute that plan, sort of knowing things a little bit better and, and clearer picture, it's, it's uh, you know, it's, it just lets you sleep a little bit better at night and, and also have a little bit of excitement build here for, for early December. So, yeah, what have you been doing in the uh, little bit of an extended off season? Have you been keeping busy and uh, have you really been in contact with the team much? Yeah, there's, uh, there's been a lot that's happened actually since we've shut down uh, in, in early March there. Obviously, uh, the drafts that we've gone through, um, we've had a lot of really exciting people, you know, join our organization. So that was a big part of it leading up to that. Um, you know, we've, uh, we've kept in really good contact with our players. And I think for me, like you said, I came in, you know, in December of last year, kind of midway through, I only had two or three months with the team. So the approach that I've really taken this off season is, is to get to know the guys. And uh, we've, we've been able to kind of every two or three weeks, keep in touch with our players. And that's a nice kind of exercise for me because it's, it's not really, um, you know, when, when you talk in the summer, you can kind of be like this and kind of be a little bit more casual and really get to know our guys and really get to see, you know, their interests and what's going on and how their family's doing. So that's been really fun for me, um, being able to check in with them and, and do that kind of stuff. And then outside of, you know, that is uh, going through this pandemic, like everybody with, with a young family. Uh, my wife has a full-time job as two. We got two little, two little guys that are growing up a lot now. They're nine and seven. And, um, you know, we've just been trading off and keeping them busy and, and uh, having a great summer too, uh, as much as we can. The weather's been amazing and we've been doing uh, golfing and fishing and boating and all that kind of stuff as well. So been able to do a lot. The time has passed. Um, but I certainly am really, really pumped to, to get back to work. Take me through the hiring process last year because it was kind of a, a couple of organizational changes. You hadn't been coaching for over a year at that point. What was that conversation between you and Adam like when he brought you on board? Um, well, what, what kind of happened was I, I was with the team as a skills coach. Um, of course, my history with the organization goes back to uh, 2003, actually, or 2002 was my first year playing for the battalion in Brampton. Um, and then, you know, parts of six season as, as an assistant coach with them. Um, so what really happened there was I got a call from Scott Abbott, the owner, and um, had a very good candid conversation and, and uh, you know, kind of piqued my interest in, in both ways. And I think what, what made it good for me was, was the fit, knowing obviously the ownership, knowing the organization, knowing the staff really well. Um, I had, you know, hit it off really well with Scott Ray and Bill Holder and, and Adam, of course, is, is unbelievable. And, and our staff was so strong. It was just a really good feeling and the big thing too is my family was settled. We're settled here and uh, we didn't have to get up and move anywhere. You know, we can uh, keep kind of going on with life and, and that's kind of nice too, because our business can be, you know, unpredictable at times. So that was really the conversation I had with, with Mr. Abbott and we kind of uh, hit it off and, and, and went from there and let's just see kind of how things go. And, and obviously I was pretty excited just to go to the rink the very first time and I knew right there I was hook line and sinker and and would want to be a part of this for sure. So what were some of the things that right off the hop you wanted to address or maybe tweak a little bit uh, when you finally took over at least as the interim head coach there? It was an interesting time to take over. I, I had obviously never been through that experience of taking a, a team over mid-season. You always have sort of a training camp and 
and uh, you know time to start implant systems or approach or things like that. Uh, so in some ways it was it was a bit of a blessing um, because all we really talked about was was more of our attitude, our habits, things like that. We didn't change too much in terms of of the systems right away. We we slowly added things in as we went, um, but that was the big thing first off and foremost was just getting back to playing for the jersey I talked about that a lot um, as somebody that wore that jersey for three years I feel like I can have a really good connection with the players about taking pride and wearing the battalion green it's very very unique and uh, that's something that you know we need to get back to a little bit so we talked a lot about that and our culture and just um, you know getting back on track and and that was really much the big focus so now what I look forward to coming into this year is that hopefully those things have stuck and then we can really get on to you know our style of play and our systems and and uh you know grow that way when did you start to notice things start to shift because I mean you took over the team and it was a pretty poor record at the time and then by the time the pandemic hit you were just a few points away from a playoff spot with a pretty favorable schedule and a pretty good chance to make that last uh, Eastern Conference spot. Uh, was there a specific moment or game or that uh, you can kind of pinpoint as to okay maybe we got something special here? Yeah I think there I think there is two moments actually. Um, we went through when we first came in we had some success and then we were kind of teeter-tottering we had a really tough schedule and i think we went 0-7 and 1 the last game of that stretch was in ottawa and they absolutely gave it to us in ottawa i mean the best team in canada at the time for good reason and um believe it or not we came back in that coach's room right after the game. We looked at each other and said, this is a really good thing that that just happened because now we don't have to be afraid anymore. Like it's happened to us. Now we can go. So that was, that was a moment that I, I found our team took big steps because we learned. And then in Barrie on the road, um, it was a Saturday night. This is shortly after that stint. And um, we just played an outstanding hockey game led from Joe Verbetic and net. Um, it was, you know, we shut them out in Barry, one of our rivals and that kind of like just slingshot us to an unbelievable stretch there. That was really a big part of that kind of last 10 game segment there. And so those two moments right there is where we kind of saw our team take big leaps and strides and, and, um, you know, we we're going in a really good direction. We were, we were thinking with those last two weekends that we had, we could have made some hay. Um, obviously things happen, but. Uh, we're, we're pretty excited about how our team was starting to play near the end there and hopefully we can grow that and, and keep it rolling. It's almost like a best case scenario in that sense because you're playing the best hockey of your season up until when it got cancelled and then you end up getting number one pick in both the import and the CHL draft. So, I mean, as a coach coming in and taking over this new team, you got to be salivating at this opportunity that you've instilled the culture almost immediately Plus, you get some good help along the way with a couple of off-season moves. We'll get into some of those. I, I want to get your thoughts on uh, Matt Guskov being brought in from the London Knights. And uh, he, he should add a little bit more of a scoring depth to your lineup there, too. Uh, what, what do you have expected uh, out of him this season? Yeah, I, I think that's a really, really good pickup that Adam did there with, with Matt Bay. I knew him quite a bit just from, you know, me coming from the Western Conference in Flint. And, and we played against him quite a bit. He was in London. And uh, I've always liked him. I've, I've always really just appreciated the, what he brings to the table. He's a very, very, um, how do I put it, like sound 200-foot player that I just don't think he's had the opportunity to be in those offensive roles to put up numbers, although he's had stretches where he's been absolutely on fire in our league. And um, he's having a really good rushing camp, by the way. But he, uh, I think he's just going to, like, solidify – sort of those top end lines for us and, and just add to, you know, kind of being a horse and, and playing in all different situations. And, and uh, we want to make sure that he's put in an offensive role with us. And I think his leadership, he's coming from a winning culture. He's had real good success in the playoffs. All those kinds of things played a factor into, you know, him being a good fit for us. Let's talk about the uh, number one pick in the uh, priority selection draft, Ty Nelson, uh, five foot eight defender, and Adam had plenty of uh, great things to say about him. I'm, I'm curious, though, as the coach, how do you go about 
putting a rookie defenseman in your lineup when he's got such high expectations like that? How do you bring him into the lineup like that? Because it's one, it's one thing to bring a forward in as a rookie. It's another thing as a defender when there's only six of them on uh, dressed at a given time. So how do you go about that? Yeah, I, I think patience is probably the key there for sure. Um, Ty is a, a very intelligent guy and I think he's, he's pretty humble and grounded and he knows that, you know, this is a tough league and, and this is going to be some learning nights and, and things of that sort. But um, at the same time, it's up to us to, to put him in situations to succeed. I mean, he can, he can add to us and he can help us big time right away with his ability. Um, but things that we can do, we can control some of the matchups. We can make sure that he has real good success and, um, you know, hopefully get him. He, he's a dynamic two-way defenseman that's going to be unbelievable you know, as he grows. And, and I think he's ahead of the curve. He's had a really good summer putting on some muscle and, and he's thick and he's well centered of gravity. Um, so I think he's going to acclimate himself pretty well to the junior game. Um, but I think just part of that is constant communication, you know, making sure he's comfortable, making sure we're comfortable, all those kinds of things can really, really help settle a young defenseman and, um, you know, and, and, and make sure that he learns as, as fast as possible. Let's talk about the number one pick in the other draft, Matt Vey Petrov, who uh, I've Adam compared him to Evgeny Kuznetsov and is as the easiest uh, comparable as he's looking in the NHL. And uh, from all accounts, it seems like that's a pretty accurate comparison. I, what do you make of what you know of uh, Matt Vey Petrov at this time? And where do you see him uh, slotting into the lineup? Well, we know he, he can score and, and he loves to score. He's got a tremendous shot little things we, we got to watch a lot of film on him and, and really kind of keened in on you know some of his attributes and what he brings he has like an unbelievable ability to get a shot off through traffic um, cut to the middle of the ice all those types of little things that uh, I, I think can bode well over here in the North American game um, and again he's being a, a little bit older he's not a 16 year old coming in uh, he's played a lot of international hockey. He's been a prominent guy for Team Russia in his age group. Uh, so he should be coming in with, with high confidence. And, and I think now when you add him, when you add in Matt Bekuskov and, and you see our returning guys with Cole, Moncada, Primo, Russell, Arnsby, um, Christopoulos, the way he ended, Jackson, like there is, there are some combinations that can be pretty interesting you know, with, with all those types of guys. So I, we've been saying it. we're going to let them kind of figure out more of the chemistry and who's going to play with who. I, I think that's important to just kind of read off chemistry. Um, but depth is going to be pretty nice there on, on the top end with the forwards. You mentioned uh, Moncada amongst some of those returning players, and obviously he'll be looked to uh, for a leadership role as well as an offensive role coming off uh, a season where he led the team in scoring. I mean, how important will a player like that be uh, just not only for the team, but for someone like yourself? Obviously, you've worked in, with him for a while, but sometimes uh, a message can't always be drilled home by a coach. It's got to come from a fellow uh, player. Uh, just maybe speak about Moncada's uh, leadership abilities and how it's maybe evolved over the time that you've uh, known him. Well, you know what, and that's a good point because sometimes the coach's message is only as strong as your leadership group because as soon as you leave the, the room, those next, you know, 30 seconds are so important about what is said and, and how those guys follow up. And I think what we get with Luke is a tremendous human being. And uh, on and off the ice, he does everything that he can to get better. And I think he's, he's shown that and proved that in his career. He had a breakout season last year, and it was because of hard work. It was because of the way he plays. He gives everything he can every single night. That's in practice. It's in the gym, weight room, you name it. Um, and he's so well-respected in our group. He's, uh, he's a funny, witty guy, too, which I, I think gets the room um, in a really good feeling, you know, and, and – that's, I think, a, a really good attribute for a captain to have because sometimes, you know, and I was probably a fault of this too as a captain, you're a little bit serious all the time. And, and I think with Luke, he's able to keep a nice even keel and it allows our young players to feel comfortable, which I think is really important because, you know, we're going to need those young guys to, to really help us right away. And, and that's all about culture and, and making sure that that's key. Luke is such a good fit for this team to, to lead the way. 
You mentioned a few other players in those uh, in that returning batch, uh, and a couple uh, stuck out to me. Uh, Lee Martinsby in particular, too. Uh, I, I get the sense that he's got a, a very high ceiling in his game if he's able to go in the right direction. Uh, wh- what do you expect out of a guy like him uh, coming off a pretty efficient first season in the league? Yeah, you know what? That's probably a good term to, to use with him. Efficient. He was efficient. The one thing we're doing here with Liam is is making sure that he knows that he is, you know, a really good player. I, I think sometimes he um, will look to pass instead of shoot sometimes and, and things of that nature. He is way more skilled and way more talented than he even knows. So um, we're going to, you know, hopefully push him to get unleashed a little bit and, and, you know, try to pick some offensive spots. But again, ultra competitor like when we start thinking about what the battalion want to be and how we want to play it's a it's a Liam Arnsby you know pedigree that's that's kind of what we're talking about never afraid about anybody he was 16 years old last year going up against 20 year olds like it was nothing you know he he had no fear in his game he never does he never backs down so we love that attitude with him and and um, you know we are pretty pumped with his ceiling for sure and, and where he can grow this. Well, and he is one of uh, a handful of 17-year-olds who will be stepping into their second full season in the o- OHL, and that's not something that happens a whole heck of a lot. Uh, that's What do you make of that when you have this crop of players that you know you'll have for a couple of years on end? You've got to be salivating at an opportunity like that. Yeah, for sure. There, there's a, a nice little core there, and I think – you know, given last year and, and kind of the way the season went and our record and how things were, it, it, it did allow us to sort of look at, you know, giving some young guys a big role, letting them play some really good minutes so we can try to accelerate that, you know, because sometimes, you know, you can play your first year, but do you really play? Do you really get development when you're, you know, in six or seven minutes a night and in every other night and, and things of that nature? That young core – not only were they playing every night, they were key contributors for us and having big roles and getting uh, minutes on special teams, all those types of things. So um, I think that's important. And yeah, you're right. Like there's no question. We look at, wow, we can, we can really grow this thing for a few years here and, and do it properly. Another one of those members is between the pipes, Joe Verbetic. You already kind of touched on him as uh, having a couple of stellar games last season. And I, I saw that firsthand too in a couple of uh, battalion games I was able to watch. And it looks like this guy is the real deal. He's the goalie that you want for the next couple of years. And luckily you'll have him for the next couple of years. Uh, how high do you see the ceiling being on Joe? Yeah. yeah. I, I just think with Joe, he, he had such a really good end, you know, I felt bad for him a little bit. And, and Adam talks about this a little bit too, is, you know, if we weren't going to make the playoffs, we really believe he would have been a, a goalie for the team Canada team, U 18s that go over and, and have that spring tournament. So we kind of did feel bad for Joe cause he was peaking, you know, and, and when I talked about earlier about, you know, a couple of moments about our team and, and where we started turning the corner is when he really, started revving it up and he was unbelievable for us uh, down that stretch run. And that was a big part of us being able to play a little bit freer and, and all those types of things. So um, it sounds like he's had a really good off season. He's gotten right at it. Um, He's done a lot of really good things on and off the ice for him. And I think his attitude is, is pretty interesting, you know, for a goaltender, his kind of quiet confidence, the way he goes about things. um, I think that's where I see, he's going to have longevity in this game because he can kind of handle the pressure. He, he relishes it. Um, you know, we, we love having him. We're super pumped that we, we get him for a few more years. And a word that I've heard you use a couple of times and a word that I heard Adam use a couple of times too is communication. And I feel like now more than ever in a time like this, it's even more imperative. How important is communication to you, not only in this off season, but when you get back on the ice and you're running the practices again and just being able to clearly articulate what you expect out of players. How are you able to do that in a way that is both understanding, but also firm? It, it's everything. It really is. It is absolutely everything that players want nowadays. Um, and like you said, it's, you know, they're not going to, it's not about telling them what they want to hear or making sure they're happy.
happy. It's just telling them, you know, plain and simple where things are at. I think it is important for guys to know their roles. I think it's important for guys to know what they need to do to maybe take on a different role if that's where they want to go or that's where they want to do it. Um, I think it's really good to have a clear identity in terms of where that player needs to go when he's, you know, 16, 17 in terms of now the projection of where they're going to be at 19, 20, those types of things. So um, communication is huge. Again, we've, we've done a really good job, I feel, and, and this is kudos to the rest of our staff as well, of reaching out to the guys. And I think they do appreciate that. We have another few months here ahead of us that we can even add to it and, um, you know, build so that, you know, when we do get to see each other face to face, will hopefully feel even more comfortable. And, and we want guys knocking on our door as much as possible. Again, you're not always going to hear the right thing and they're not always going to be happy. But I think if they know, then they don't have to wonder. You know, I was always, when I played, I was always the guy that if we got scored on and I kind of knew it was my fault or that was my guy that scored, I just had a bad feeling in my gut and I knew that was going to be played on video you know, the next day and you're going to see it and you're like, Oh God, like we got to see that. But then when you do see it and it's over with, you feel fine. And so we try to get ahead of it a little bit with our guys too, in terms of that, like, okay, it's, it's fine. That was, that was a big mistake, but we'll talk about it and make sure you can learn from it. And then you're going to feel better, you know, just sort of that, take that anxiety away. So, you know, we try to get ahead of that. Everybody in our staff's played, they, they have different, um, you know, we have spectrums of eras that we played in and all that kind of stuff. So I think collaboratively, we do, we do a pretty good job with the communication. And lastly, you know the type of hockey that the fan base here enjoys. It's, it's, uh, you guys seem to be on the upswing right now. Why should people watch the North Bay Battalion this year from your point of view? Well, I, I think, just like you said, I think we're going to be a, a team that, the North Bay fans can be proud of, you know, putting that green jersey on and, and every night giving it everything that we have. Um, I think it's going to be intriguing to see some of the flair come back into our game with some of the guys that we have coming into the roster. We have some really, really good young prospects coming up. we got some veteran guys fighting for contracts. I think it's, uh, it's going to be an intriguing time for, for the battalion fans this year with a lot of guys playing for stuff and, and of course, we want to take leaps and bounds and, and move this thing in the right direction. So couldn't be excited enough for uh, December to start rolling around and, and hopefully see everybody in the ranks at that time, too. Um, hopefully everything goes well. Ryan Lynn, head coach of the North Bay Battalion, thank you very much for joining us here today. Thanks for having me.